Can we find an equation for a wave that is moving? Its motion is very intricate and it depends both on position and on time. And let me show you a derivation of one of the greatest differential equations. We're going to start off with a small segment of the wave. Initially, the angle to the horizontal of the string is just theta, but then just a little bit further along the wave, the angle has increased to theta plus a small amount, which we're just going to call d theta. Let's also say that this string is going to have a mass per unit length, which is going to just be equal to mu. What forces are acting on this string? If the segment is sufficiently small enough, the tension is going to be the same on this side and on this side. Well, the component of the tension which is acting downwards is just going to be t sine theta. However, up here, the vertical component of the tension will be just equal to t sine of theta plus a small increase in angle d theta. So let's apply Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. Because we're taking a small portion of the wave, I'm just going to say that this tiny bit of mass is just going to be equal to dm. And let's say that our vertical displacement is just y, so we can write the acceleration as dy squared by dt squared. Notice that I'm using partial derivatives. If you've never encountered those, do not worry. The reason why we're using them is because the displacement depends both on position and on time. So mass times acceleration will be equal to the sum of all forces. Because this component here is acting downwards, I'm going to say that this is equal to minus t multiplied by sine theta plus t. This component is now acting upwards, which is going to be sine of theta plus d theta. And because we're acting over a very small distance, we can totally use the small angle approximation that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta in radians. You can write this as dm, the second derivative of the displacement, will be equal to minus t theta plus t. We get rid of the sine. What we get is theta plus t d theta. Notice that those two are essentially going to cancel out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to express this little mass dm in terms of the mass per unit length. If mu is equal to the mass per unit length, then we can say that mu is equal to dm divided by the length of this segment. So we just call that dx, meaning that dm will be equal to mu multiplied by dx. So what we get is that mu multiplied by dx times the acceleration dt squared will be equal to t d theta. How do we find an expression for this angle? Well, using some simple trigonometry, we can just say that dy by dx is equal to the tangent of theta. This is still not d theta though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x, and what we're going to find is that the second derivative with respect to x will be equal to the derivative of tan, which is equal to 1 over cos squared, but then we're not quite done because the angle depends on uh, the displacement. Therefore, we need to use the chain rule. So we're going to multiply by the derivative of theta, which is going to be just d theta by dx. Remember though, we're dealing in a case of really small angles, and when theta is really small, 1 over cos squared was actually going to be approximately equal to 1. Therefore, the second derivative with respect to x will just be equal to 1 times d theta times dx. And now I can just rearrange this for d theta which will just be equal to dx times dy squared by dx squared. And I can plug this. And what I'm going to get is that mu dx second derivative with respect to time is going to equal to t. And then rather than d theta, I'm going to write dx and then the second derivative with 
respect to x. Those two can now just cancel. And what we're left with is that the second time derivative is equal to t divided by mu multiplied by dy over dx squared. And this right here is the famous wave equation which describes the motion of a wave. If we were to do dimensional analysis, we realize that this factor over here actually has units of speed squared. It appears everywhere in physics. It appears in sound waves, it appears in electromagnetic waves, it even played a crucial role in one of the greatest unifications in physics, realizing that electromagnetic waves obey this equation and propagate at the speed of light. Now, I know you enjoy differential equations and you really need to have a look at deriving the equation for the rate of change of a mass of an entire black hole. You really need to look at that and this video is right over here.